shared what is um he was more of a money guy so what he was doing like shy locking what was his rackets yeah, um, definitely. He said he was a loan shark and he was doing, you know, kind of the, I don't think he did a little bit of the bookie stuff, but yeah. I, I didn't hear the, the peep peep show. What is that? When he, when I interviewed him <laughs> uh, before, your, before, before your time, there used to be like, uh, you put a quarter, so I heard you put a quarter in and like a thing goes up and it's either a, a live woman, like you know, dancing okay. around kind of like a strip club type thing, or there's like a video and you're in like a booth or so, or, or so I heard. <laughs> okay, yeah, I know what you mean now. <laughs> I also learned um, loan sharky. Loan sharky was big. It's there it is. Yeah, I think he was a money guy. Um, did pretty well for himself. Yeah. Um, you know, kind of was semi legitimate, obviously, but semi crooked. Had the father who was, you know, powerhouse. Um, you know, one thing I do remit remiss on the interview is not to get all like psychological, but I didn't deep dive into like the true like nature of their relationship. I would have loved to love that dynamic a little bit more. Um, that's why you do these unpackings, but I have a feeling that um, uh, for him to do what he did, he obviously had a grudge his father, be grudge his father a little bit, you know? Right. Yeah. At one point at one of the biggest crews, if not the biggest, we never had less than a million dollars on the street at any given time. Well, that's a lot. Yeah. Than there, it's about 10% a week, 520. So you got a hundred K coming in just on big. <laughs> Yeah, and, and you know, um, there there were a lot of ways to make money. Um, there were there were uh, places that paid protection. Yeah, street tax. Excuse me. Yeah, so so, e pizza, right? In Italy, but the extortion, um, I believe, as far as I know, kind of ended in, at maybe the latest on the streets in the like maybe late eighties, mid eighties. Uh, shopkeepers and stuff, Italian shopkeepers. But it looks like in his generation, it looks like it was still around. You know. Yeah, and do you remember? Do you recall what era he was around in the? 90s? Yeah, I think I think he was um, kind of like late eighties, early nineties. Okay, yeah, and so then he, maybe up to the like mid nineties. Yeah, so in in Chicago, I guess it was a little bit different than New York if they were still having that going on. Yeah, I find that interesting. <laughs> and um, so, and, and there was legitimate stuff too. You could make it legitimate money. So, so you were, you know, you were not a street guy per se, but you're obviously getting groomed by, you know, made guy, your uncle's a made guy. And now you're 17, 18 years old. Did you, you know, attend college? He also started real young too. You kind of talked to a lot of guys. And like, when you hear like, when I started at 13, 14 years old, that's like other generation. The guy's like not that much older than me. And like, he started out very young. I also found that, you know, pretty interesting as well, you know? Yeah. And like the way that they, they like, like he was saying, like the, you know, when he started, it was just little things at first, you know, just like similar stories, you know, that we hear from other guys we interviewed, you know, but that's how it starts. Just little things like that. But, you know, his dad being who he was and his uncle being who he was, you know, I mean, you know, stuff's going to kind of go, come over fast if you get, let it happen. You know what I mean? Let, let me ask you a question, Adrian. When, when you do these interviews, right, and, and you know, I, I don't know how you do it, but what I try to do is as good or a bad person as they are, I try to find to relate to them in some way and empathize in some way and relate in some way um during your interviews do you do the same yeah i absolutely do you know because you know we're all people and stuff and you know whether they did some you know horrible stuff you know i mean that's not what they're doing now and they're trying to change i mean yeah a lot of people are not going to like that you know but you know i i i try to be very open-minded and try to you know come to some kind of level with them you know because they're giving me the time to do an interview, you know what I mean? I, I, don't, I don't feel it would be right to just bash them, you know what I mean? So I want to get to know, like, what's in their head. Why would they do that? Do they regret that? You know, but I'm not going to, you know, push on them and, you know, you know, give them shit for it, you know what I mean? Yeah. In what way did you relate to Frank? Well, you know, when he was talking about his stuff with his father, I was just like, uh, you know, I, I've had, you know, issues and stuff with my dad and stuff as well. Not as yeah, near as what we all what, Yeah, right. <laughs> not as near as with Frank, you know, but, you know, so I, you, you kind of, Come down to that level, okay, father, son, being young, you know, this is what I you saw. Mean, you mean you mean he didn't try to kill you? No, no, no. <laughs> no, no, no. No, maybe a few fist fights and stuff, but nothing, <laughs> nothing like that. Well, you know. fist cuffs, but no gun in the mouth. Yeah, yep, yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so when I interview, and again, that's what I like to unpack, is I get really fascinated when people hit like these pivot points or forks in the road. And he's probably at this point, 17 year old kid, and like kind of can go you know, this way and the legitimate life or go this way and kind of the, the mafioso life. And then obviously he 
committed to the mafioso life, but those decisions in life are what make or make or break us. Right. This probably comes down to me even being 46 years old. I could probably whittle it down to five or six decisions I made that you know, charted the course. That's why I get so fascinated by these Adrian. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, and that's what, you know, I, I agree with that, man, you know, because, you know, you can either go one way in life or you can go the other way. And like, you never know what, how big a decision that is until, you know, like you said, you get older and mature, but you know, we got to roll with what we go with. You know what I mean? We can't go back. Exactly. Uh, so the more I did for my dad, the more he's seen of him and me. And he, and he started bringing me into this more and more. And because he couldn't bring me into life, he would always say, you're my secret weapon. Yeah. Yeah. So it seems like he was, he liked what he saw. Could probably make money with the kid. Obviously trusted him. But the same token is I don't think he was like running to propose him for membership either. You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't think so either, you know, but at the same time, he really had him kind of on the back burner. Like, yeah, we can do something good with them. Correct. So basically mostly worked with my dad and uncle, met a few other people that were, that were in the crew, but it wasn't out on the street because I always worked a full time job. I had a job with the city. Yeah. So <laughs> he worked for the city. I love that. <laughs> exactly. Intertwined in the society. That's how it's supposed to be. Uh-huh. I did rehabbing, roofing, whatever I could do to make money. I was always awesome. And, um, you know, so slowly my dad brought me into this more. I wanted to go away to college. Yeah. I wanted to be a lawyer. When we got out of high school, my dad had this control problem with all of us. He wouldn't let us go away to college. And my two brothers were born. That's an old school thing. A funny story, when I was 17 years old, um, I wanted to go away to school. My mother was like, you could either go away to school or I'll buy you a car. And I was like, really? I have that option? She's like, yeah. And one Saturday, she's like, oh. I'm like, what are we doing today? She goes, oh, we're going to get your car. I'm like, I thought I had 